live. Welcome back to the big board. Let me just bring up the stream on YouTube here and we'll get started so I can follow along with the commentary if there is any. I know it's a short notice gig, so I'm not expecting a lot of folks to turn up, but it's more an opportunity for me to articulate what we're going to do with this scenario and what we'll, how we'll handle the op sheets and stuff like that. And I thought that might be interesting for some folks. <clears throat> it's a, it's a, a, quite an interesting little scenario, but it's got a, a lot of moving parts to it. Hang on, big boy. See if I can find my own channel. That'd be funny. If I can't. Here we go. Here it is. Now I just need to bring up the chat. If there is a chat, am I? Yes, top chat, here we go. All right. Pop out the chat. Minimize this. All right, if and when someone turns up, we're good to go. <clears throat> so let's have a look at the whole map first of all and kind of get a, a feel for what's going on. Uh, Kampf Group Huba. It's over here on the western side of the map. They enter the game at 11 a.m. The scenario runs from 11 a.m. through to uh, the end of the 1400 turn. And so it's a short 10 turn scenario. Folks have uh, the players, hey, Kilroy, how are you doing, man? Uh, the folks have, uh, the players have uh, just 10 turns to achieve their objectives. Uh, for the Allies, there are some units in place. So we've got elements of the, the 501st and I believe the 50... Yeah, two, two companies from the 501st, the Company F and Company G, along with some uh, 57 mm, millimeter AT guns and a Bofa, a couple of Bofas there on the trestle bridge. And this is where it kind of gets a little interesting with the, the terrain stuff. We'll get into that in a sec. These guys are in prepared positions, so they're dug in. They can't really move then. If they do move, they lose their prepared positions. We're going to zoom in a little bit over here so you can see what's going on, what I'm talking about there. Hey, Mo, how you doing, man? Uh, <clears throat> well, you're not supposed to have your phone on. You won't get woken up. I've been up since 20 past five. Let's go. Got to roll dice. Got stuff to do. I don't know why I was up at 20 past five, but I was. Uh, so dug in guys here as well. They're stuck in position. So a challenge, right? Uh, and we'll talk about why that's a challenge in a minute. I've got this one lone uh, HQ company sitting up here on the highest point on the map, which is now just off screen. So we'll do that here. A uh, great unit, the firepower of eight, morale of zero, so super, confident chaps uh hq for the 101st makes no sense for it to be out uh here we're probably going to pop it back behind the uh this raised embankment of the canal which is going to be 10 meters high I, I, I really wanted to work out how i could take control of this 20 meter high position here because it gives a good field of view across the rest of the map and then uh we've got uh so here's the objective for the germans Bridge, two bridges, and zoom out a little bit. We all know how sensitive my, my, my phone is to these things. One bridge here, one bridge here. In the full campaign game, the objective is to destroy the, the bridges with pioneers or engineers uh, or capture them. And you get less VPs for capturing them than you do for the uh, destruction of them. In this scenario, there are no, no engineers that I'm aware of on the map that all coming in that allow us to do dis destructive uh, release of these two bridges or this one uh, just off screen up here, which is worth one VP, uh, I think two VPs and maybe three VPs here uh, for capture versus destruction, right? Now, there's also, uh, so obviously then it's the Allies job to keep this primary road, the white road, here in play yeah uh and and relatively clear but they've got to control the bridges so that 30 core can come up this way and head into vagal 
<clears throat> and then on uh, into uh, to greener pastures, right? So I'm going to try. Whoa, easy there, big time. All right, so we're going to try and uh, zoom out a little bit. There's another VP location that's really interesting, and it's this town here. Kempkins is worth one VP in this scenario as well. So all of the reinforcements, of which there are many, uh, come in for the Allies down here in, in Zone A. You know, it's the road to Eindhoven, right? Uh, so we're, uh, we're looking to bring our forces in here, follow this road, get across there. I need to exit eight or more Sherman tanks, six or more AT guns from the 20 uh, tanks that are reinforcements. And there are, I think, uh, nine AT guns that are reinforcements. And I've also got a full platoon and another company. No, sorry, a full, is it a full battalion? I think it's the full battalion of the 327th Glider Infantry is, is up here. Do, 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 all the way up there, right? So they're all coming in across the uh, across the turns here. They're gonna come in every 20 minutes. There are some units arriving, which makes creating uh, operational orders uh, a little tricky and uh, a little dip, a little uh, a little difficult but we're we're gonna persevere with it and work it out now obviously in the heading i also mentioned a giveaway we're going to get to that and hopefully i won't forget but i'm i'm trying to articulate how i'm going to handle this battle between the two forces and and what's important and what's not the more i look at the map the more i keep having second thoughts about plans that I'm trying to construct for both sides. So it's pretty interesting. Now, you may know some other units across here as well. They're units from Company E, Easy Company from the 506th. And they have, uh, they are on hasty defense orders, so they can move around a little bit. They, they can certainly counterattack and stuff like that, uh, but they are not uh, any prepared defenses or anything of that nature. So this bridge, critical, and this is where the guys, they can set up within three hexes of, of there, right? So looking at this terrain, and I'm sorry for the zooming, the way the zoom works when it's live, but it's just very finicky and touching. Let's see if I can uh, get a slightly higher perspective. I'm not supposed to move the camera when you're live. It's probably a rule. Uh, so let's see. These, uh, this is a railroad embankment that's raised 10 meters high. This is a, ro a raised road 10 meters high. This canal is 10 meters high. Uh, these will block line of sight from here to there, obviously, and from here to there, obviously. It's also going to block any any line of sight from here, right? So this gives the two battalions of Germans, uh, my initial thought was one battalion would just, you know, toddle up along this road, dump off here, come up this side, along the side, to the Zuid Willems Canal, and then just close assault this uh, son of a bitch here and take it, right? Uh, press through uh, and then head to the other victory bridge right here, for another VP, that would give me one, and I think it's two, three VPs. Let me just double check that, because hey, why not? While we're here and we're just chatting live and something doesn't, something exciting does not have to happen every 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, two VPs actually, so that'd be a net of three, and then six if I capture this one, Interestingly enough, the VP allocations for this, you only get a minor victory in this scenario if you can get between five to seven VPs. So how can, the, and that's all there are here. Uh, two, one is three, and three is six. So the best I could ever do is six, well, uh, which would be, uh, a minor victory. However, there is one other way that I can boost that to a major victory, uh, but I can't get any further that I'm aware of, is 
by denying the exit of those tanks that I mentioned earlier on from this road here, getting off this road here. So that then starts to shape our thinking about how we want to tackle this particular situation, right? I'm going to move the entire camera down a little bit because I want to get that, ta that township in play, in view. Two battalions, four pans of fives, bunch of AT guns, some AA guns, 20 millimeter AA guns and stuff like that. Excuse me. Oh, by the way, there's a little screening force here of scout cars and armored cars that the Brits have. And, uh, you know, where they go, I'm still debating, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the lines of sight that I can use to call in some artillery to try and slow things down a little bit, try and catch these guys on the hop, on move mode on a road is never going to be nice. Uh, so I'm looking for uh, cheap shots that way. Um, so my plan is to take, uh, make uh, two op sheets, one for battalion one, one for battalion two. I'm going to allocate the majority of the tanks to one particular battalion and probably the majority of the T guns as well. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, split the bo the bofers, split the uh, AA guns, the twenty millimeter guns, evenly, and just and and allocate most of the AT guns to one formation, which will probably end up being this one, I think. Uh, both of these formations have a bunch of MG units, uh, sections, and mortar sections as well. There, uh, that's an MG. Where's a mortar? They have a slow movement rate. Where are they? Here they are. These are 81 millimeter mortars, so they're pretty effective. And if you can keep them in a stack, they've got a firepower of four. They can put some pain on people. All right. So I wrote up, uh, I wrote up some plans, and my intention is here that I, I'm going to roll for the plan so that there's no sort of bias on either side uh, for the Germans. And then uh, I'm gonna try and come up with a couple of different plans for the American reinforcements, which are basically, well, it's actually, they're American reinforcements, the Allied reinforcements, because it's the, uh, it's, you know, battalion or company C, squadron C of the 40, uh, it's not the 44th, of just of the Royal Tank Regiment, I think is what it is. Yeah, C-44. Yeah, I was right. Okay, C-44 <coughs> of the Royal Tank Regiment. So there's Fireflies and Shermans in that uh, 20 tank uh, group. I think it's 20 tanks. It's, it might be more. So here are, the, here are the rough plans that I was thinking through. And this is where I value some input or feedback or commentary later, if you're watching it later. <coughs> I had op sheet one. Uh, battalion one to attack through to this town here. Now that would mean they would need to attack through here. Uh, the other thing I can do is give them an order to attack here and then here on the one op sheet. That's certainly possible, although things tend to go pear shaped pretty quickly. Uh, generally speaking, according to Lee Forrester, if you try and do that, because if you get held up here, you don't make this, then you've got to fail and then bring in a new op sheet. Uh, I can write up as many op sheets as I want, but they're, they all, they're all going to have to accrue turns. We only have 10 turns to put things into play here. Uh, so attacking, is it attacking here? I don't know how this is going to be done because it's a tricky situation when you get onto a bridge you can suffer overwatch fire twice because it's a restricted uh, piece of terrain it's like a choke point i think they call it uh and then uh the other challenge i had for the reason why these guys were in the open over here is that they there's no spot for them to shoot into here without being on this ex this exposed embankment and there are penalties when you're shot at uh, for being on that embankment because uh, you're an easier target. Just let's just leave it at that, right? Okay. So, <clears throat> so we've got we, we've got this plan that we want we want to potentially attack all the way through to here, bring the entire battalion, all the mortars, all the MGs, all the I'm going to keep all the AA guns 
and I'm going to, to I'll, I'll allocate nearly all the AA guns there and a couple of AT guns, and we'll press on this. That's option one. For the second battalion in this particular instance, for this particular op sheet, we would also then uh, look to screen and attack the these zone. I don't know how to use the right words here for this, but I wanted to move second battalion down to here, set up in kind of an arc over here, and basically drop into, that would be our move order, and then we would be in a defense mode and we would be looking to either attack anything that comes on here or defend against, excuse me, anything that comes on here, yeah? So that was my, my thinking there. Now, uh, not because we know that we don't want the reinforcements to get across the bridge, right? So there's that. So that was my first choice. The second uh, plan that I had was for <clears throat> Battalion 1 to attack across the bridge and capture 2410, which is this hex, this hex here. So now I'm saying, I'm going to move the camera. Oh, I'll just try and zoom in here a little bit for you. Whoa, hey there, big time. All right, attack across here. Capture this bridge. And then set up basically along this sort of canal line here or these woods here and fire and pr provide overwatch fire and support for an attack by 2nd Battalion here that would come up and really, you know, full, full, full bore attack here. The challenge for 2nd Battalion is that uh, they have they're going to have their their flanks exposed by all these reinforcements coming. So that seems like a uh, hey, good morning, Charles. Good to see you. Uh, so that seems like a bit of a challenge. But nevertheless, that's one of their. We're going to keep one company in reserve, and we will uh, we'll try and put them somewhere useful, probably over here as a as a reserve force, or maybe back here as a reserve force. And I'll probably allocate some AT guns to those guys so they can you know prop here and uh and do their shooty shooty bit at uh any of the arriving shermans and fireflies okay uh the third option so we'd be using a d6 here one through you know one through six and picking a plan third option is <coughs> uh battalion one would move two companies to 2813 which is just uh somewhere around here right uh as a move and then Ooh. And then by 1400, but t so we would just literally just move here, mainly uh, we just move two companies here, mainly to put these guys, make these guys stay where they are, right? So it's a threatening force. <clears throat> but by 1400, second battalion would advance, uh, take Kemkins here down off screen at the bottom, if you're just joining right here, right? and follow through once again doing a double attack order to try and take this bridge full of problems right very difficult I, I they're the two uh, the three primary plans or options or ideas it's a multi yes uh, multi-man publishing the game is the old the game is tactical combat system <coughs> uh charles and we're doing platoon scale stuff uh, and discussing our options here as we we build out the op sheets or the plans for in the first instance for the Germans here that have two battalions of forces that are going to be trying to capture these bridge locations here just a quick summary for those that are joining us how many folks we got we've got 12 well okay uh let's see now for the other side for the allies they've got the trick of bringing units in here and getting up to here. Now the 20 minute turns, <clears throat> that's the, the time, the elapsed time of a turn. A tank can make it from here to there easily. That's about nine or 10 movement points and they have 18. So I can bolt down this road pretty quickly, just as the Germans can get over to here in basically two moves before 
the allies get their first reinforcements on the board. So it is going to be some sort of meeting engagement here, which makes it pretty interesting. And this is why I was kind of, if you were, if you're a member of the tactical combat system Facebook group, I was getting a little spun up around the axle asking questions about lines of sight and stuff like that. Uh, it's getting a little, a little juicy on that one. All right, a little water. <clears throat> okay, so what what are we going to do with the allies? Uh, you know what? I got to let a dog in. Stand by. Where were we? <clears throat> Allies. Arrival start at 11.40. The 327th, which is three companies of not as strong. Let me pull these guys. Oh, actually, they're not too bad. They're not as tough as the 506th and the 501st. There are six firepower. You're not going to be able to see those because of because of the shadow. Uh, but there are 6-1. These guys are 7-1. These guys have longer range, actually. It's interesting. They have a range of 6, and the uh, the paratroopers have a range of... Oh, no, they have 6 as well. Okay, so they both have 6. Uh, typical mortar teams, and then we've got some 57mm uh, AT guns that are arriving with them as well. These guys, I guess, are all coming on foot. I don't see any transportation for them. And then there's a series of uh, tanks that arrive in sort of hodgepodge fashion. 1143 companies from the 327th uh, Battalion. So, oh, and then, uh, yeah, three AT guns, six AT guns from the 81st AA with a couple of MGs and then four Fireflies. And then 1220, we've got four more Shermans. Then 1240, four more Shermans. Then 1300, four more Shermans. And then some off-board artillery is made available. And then 1400, last turn, Company F, two 506 and four Fireflies arrive. Actually, no, those four Fireflies, Fireflies do not arrive. They, are, they, come on, they come on map B. So they are not part of this scenario. So that is good to know. I need to make sure I don't bring those on because I'm pretty sure I pulled them. That would change the game a tad. Uh, so that's, that's the arrival. So for, the, for those chaps, I, I put together uh, three rough plans. One, the 322nd, 327th, and, the, and let's call them Company uh, C, 44th uh, Royal Tank Regiment would secure Kemkin. Down here, Kemkin, Duahawk, this hill that I mentioned that was 20 meters high earlier on, and uh, basically occupy the Chopinreich uh, uh, location. Uh, third, on turn 1300, they will have a uh, uh, order to move four Shermans and four AT guns across the bridge and basically exit the map. And that would be taken from the 11.40 a.m. reinforcements, ideally. 1,400, we would move the balance of the Shermans required to be moved and two more AT guns uh, from that organization. Uh, the final reinforcements, the, the 306th uh, Company F, uh, would move to Kempkins, uh, just move to Kempkins here, since it's a VP point. Second plan, which I, I kind of like and might be interesting, is attack with everything. Uh, Ida. You know, so I'd have to come through Kempkins, we'd have to secure Kempkins and attack Ida and go for it from there. I thought that was kind of cool. Now, we would then have to have a supplemental uh, op sheet. And what I would probably do is run the uh, British tanks on a separate op sheet and have multiple sheets for them and then drop them off one op sheet and then give them a move order to do the exit. So that would probably work. <clears throat> My third option was uh, 
merely, uh, yeah, my third option here is strictly, what did I put here? Oh, this is really just a, a movement and drop into hasty defense along this, along this line here. That's basically what I wrote here. My, my scratch, my chicken scratch and notes are not very clear. 1220 Sherman's move to basically this line, support the 506th and attack any enemy units they see. I don't know if you can actually say that because it's not an attack order, it's it's a move order. So we, we'd have to get the, the right context. And and here it's more about what, what could the folks, what could the what could the people reasonably do? What could the four <clears throat> gosh, my voice is dry today. What could the forces reasonably do? Yeah. What makes sense in a military context, which is why <clears throat> hopefully some of you guys can chime in at some point. All right. I'm trying not to choke here. <clears throat> so that's the, that's kind of the game plan. Very strong infantry units with great morale sitting on really crappy terrain that, for instance, I'm just going to double check that all these embankment locations are indeed treated as, yeah, they are, are treated as open. Dikes are treated as open. The canal, not a third, no, where is canal bridges open? Railroad embankment open. Oh, hang on a second. So that's, that is different. Let's see. I could have sworn I saw here where it said that the, it was treated as billiard terrain, in which case, oh, here we go. Yeah, vehicles treat dike hexes as billiard terrain for combat purposes, foot treat it as open terrain. Uh, so that means I made a mistake in the post, my blog post. By the way, I wrote a blog post on this uh, a day ago, two days ago, something like that. I need to go back and do a quick edit on that to tweak that up a little bit uh, to make it more accurate. Unit choosing truck movement may only enter, oh yeah, okay, through a road hex eye. Truck vehicles may enter or leave without worrying about the road, but it costs them their entire movement allowance. And yada, yada, yada. The canal, what's anything special about the canal? I'm glad I double checked that there. No, it just goes into some nonsense about the railway embankments and the elevation of them there is nothing there's also this movement cons constraint going underneath the railway embankment like here there's a road that goes to here we've got a there's a special line of sight rule for that yeah my my, my blog posts are generally broken mo but thanks for that bro uh so anyway there you have it now if you're a reader of the blog which some of you are, some of you just see the posts on Facebook and go, eh, what is that? And don't click through, you read the first few sentences. That's a shame. Uh, I have pinned a post, I believe, on Facebook and uh, I will uh, try and pin it on my blog. I've set up a new, and this is all leading into the giveaway, so don't run away anywhere. And I'm going to, I'm going to continue talking about this for a minute more, but, um, <clears throat> I've set up something, I've set up a, uh, a place to sort of put all uh, of my narrative or creative writing that's generated out of gameplay like this into a separate location that is distinct and uh, all, uh, all sort of moved off to one side, right? Still has pictures, it's just like another blog, but it's called a Substack and it's big board I probably should know what the URL is, right? It's big board gaming, I think, dot substack or forward slash substack or something like that. Regardless, you can find out, and this is part of the challenge for you, uh, find out where the substack is. Anyone who is already subscribed on uh, that substack, I think there's 15 or 16 of you already, just popped it up yesterday or the day before. So appreciate those new subscribers. It's free, uh, obviously, you know, I don't charge for stuff. Well, not yet anyway, you know, one of these days when I get old and cranky, I'll start charging for shit and I'll make a dollar a month. Uh, the, uh, go subscribe to the Substack, read a couple of stories and post a comment on a story. 
Anyone who is subscribed and has posted a comment on the story will go into the draw to win a copy. And I'm gonna, oh damn, this thing is freaking heavy. So let me just back out the camera way out. And I'm gonna put this up here. <clears throat> you will win a copy of this game, point blank. V is for victory, okay? This thing weighs a monster ton. I mean, it's seriously heavy. I, I don't know the weight. I'm going to call it everything, every bit of six or seven pounds. Uh, it's basically, now I haven't played and I actually did not ask for this game to be sent to me. Uh, so David was very kind, gave me a call had a chat with him. We were talking about uh, Valor of the 13th and he knew that I wasn't super excited about some of the tweaks to the armor rules. And I played the game and I made my comments and uh, they were neutral to slightly negative, but uh, the Valor of the 13th module is awesome, right? The scenario is great. There's some big tank battles in there. There's some big multi-map infantry battles is a lot of big battles uh, in, in Vela of the uh, 13th. Highly recommend that. However, he uh, called me and said, hey, look, do you want a copy of this game? We're going to send you one. And I was like, dude, I'm really not sure this is going to be me, right? It's it's basically lock and low tactical with cards, right? So as a kind of, kind of a, in the vein of um, upfront, right? Or Fields of Fire, probably not Fields of Fire. It's got a decent sort of footprint, so if you if you're kind of stretch for room, it may not be for you. But because uh, you know, there's lots of bits and pieces, there's 119 mini cards, 700 poker cards, two uh, a one 32 by 38 map, some manuals, a scenario book, uh, player aids out the yin yang. As always, they they do amazing player aids. Two counter sheets, 160 counters, and two dice. Right, so. Um, Big, big, <clears throat> heavy game, right? Uh, and it looks super interesting. I've, I've watched some playthrough of it. I'm not much into solitaire games myself. So, uh, and I believe this, uh, you can have two players, I understand, but it's really designed, I believe, more for uh, solitaire players. And I know that a lot of you play solitaire and I thought this would be kind of cool for you to have the opportunity to, to, to win this. I. I might do a shrink rip on it, mainly because I want to read the rules. So unless I can get a PDF version, I, I think I have a PDF version of the rules. So maybe I won't open it. I'll keep it pristine in the shrink. Either way, uh, I am going to ask this, though. Uh, if you're an international applicant or uh, entrant, uh, you're going to need to pay some of the shipping because this thing is freaking heavy. And I'm, I'm a really nice, generous guy. And you know, got all those great things going for me. I ain't paying shipping to Europe. So you can either not in, not enter or be prepared to pay the majority of the shipping for this particular item to make its way over to you. I will cover shipping in the US. I will not cover shipping in Canada, uh, nor Australia for that matter. So uh, you, you guys are, are up for 50 to 80% of the cost of the shipping, depending on how much it is, right? So wanted to share that with you. I'm going to, I'm going to look for 10, 20 new subscribers over and above the 15 that are already there before I do a draw. So if it takes a day, we'll do the draw in a day. If it takes two weeks, we'll do it in two weeks. I have two other games that I've given away and one of them I'm about to ship today. I'm going to have to do a redraw on the first on the first thing I gave I gave away the Yar magazine that I gave away because um, it's I can't find the guy's name and uh, he has not uh, uh, reached out to me or, or responded again. Uh, I don't know where the email went, or, uh, so I'm I'm going to have to redraw that. My apologies to that winner. Uh, you're you're not a winner unless you got the game, I guess. Uh, shame on me, but I was traveling and, and lost it. Ryan, good to see you. All right, Charles, good to see you too. And so, so there you have it. So this, I'm, I'm excited about getting this played. Uh, it's 10 turns. I'm hoping I can crank most of this out today and tomorrow morning. 
I will be uh, probably doing the truncated sequence of play versioning of, of my gameplay here. Um, probably won't be running too many live bits and pieces. I know that Jeff from uh, uh, Hex to Hex is uh, learning this system with the Omaha rules right now. I don't know if it's worthwhile me posting some stuff for him uh, just to help him along, but we'll see. So anyway, there you have it. I hope you guys will enter the competition. Go subscribe to the Substack. I will put a link down below to where that is so that you can find it. And we'll kind of go, we'll go for it from there. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Go roll dice. Ciao.